trace our journey back to the beginning when we started learning about uh, algebra we were introduced to the world of numbers uh, precisely we learn about the set of all integers and then uh, with the integers came two natural operations addition and multiplication uh, um, and later we learn how to add real numbers and we learn how to uh, multiply real numbers and we studied their properties in in college when we were uh, when we studied multivariable calculus we learned how to add vectors together and then we know we learn how to take the dot product of two vectors and um, uh, come on to all of these structures um, is the fact that uh, very often the addition that we use is a commutative uh, operation and also one important property um, is the interplay the nice interplay between the the two operations the the the, the addition and the multiplication very often our multiplication that we've uh, that we looked at distribute itself inside addition all right so what we are going to do uh, moving forward is to try to elevate these uh, these examples to 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 a much more abstract level and try to study structures that we uh, obtain when we take a set and endow a set the, the set with two operations which bear striking resemblance with the structure that we have seen with the integers with addition and uh, multiplication or the uh, vectors with addition and dot product and so on this is the starting the start of uh, the journey of ring theory okay so definition a ring uh, is a set which we denote by R with uh, uh, two binary operations which will denote denoted by uh, addition in uh, multiplication and these may not this may not have anything to do with the usual addition and multiplication and they satisfy uh, the following axioms a plus b plus c is equal to a plus b plus c for all a b c in r so in other words the this operation the addition operation is associative Secondly, A plus B is going to be equal to B plus A for all A, B in R. And this means that our addition operation is uh, commutative. Thirdly, um, there is uh, an element. zero in the ring such that zero plus uh, any element is uh, itself fourthly for every element x in the ring uh, There exists a unique element Y in R such that uh, X plus Y is Y plus X and that's zero. 
5 for all x, y, z in R, x, um, x, y, product C, uh, product Z is uh, x product y product z so uh, the product e product is more is uh, associative six um, a product b plus c is going to be a product b plus a product c and b plus c product uh, a uh, is going to be equal to uh, b product a plus c product a and uh, this is called the distributive law So a ring is uh, a set with two binary operations satisfying all of these um, all of these six axioms. Now, furthermore, we'll say that uh, a ring with uh, unity. Not every ring is a ring with unity, but a ring with unity uh, satisfies the following. There exist an element which will denote by one uh, in the ring such that such an element is not the additive identity and uh, one product X is X product one and that's equal to x for all x in the ring again this is super important we do not assume here that every ring is a ring of unity so this is uh, an additional uh, condition which may or may not hold so uh, generally as far as notation is concerned will uh, um, we often write <coughs> xy instead of x product y and also when it comes to subtraction and again one is not to confuse this operation with the usual operation when you write x minus y what we mean is x plus the additive opposite of y um, and it's also important here to uh, to clarify that uh, the multiplica multiplication is uh, not necessarily commutative and uh, when this is the case when this is the case we shall say that uh, R is a commutative ring okay so when the second operation is commutative we'll say that uh, r is a commutative ring uh, moreover uh, the multiplicative identity the multiplic identity 
one um, when it exists is called uh, the unity of the ring. Again, um, not every ring has a unity. Here are some examples. Uh, first, if you take the set of all integers, R, Q, the set of complex numbers, which is the set of all numbers of the type x plus i, y, where x and y are real numbers. Uh, these are all commutative rings. Commutative uh, rings with unity, actually. On the the usual operations, addition and multiplication. Secondly, um, let's say Zn, which consists of zero, one, and so on, all the way till n minus 1. This is also a commutative ring. Ring when uh, endowed with uh, um, addition mod n and uh, multiplication uh, mod n so let, let's take for example take for instance uh, z2 right which is 0 and 1 notice that um, if we take uh, Let's do the uh, addition table. We have 0, 1 here. 0, 1. 0 plus 0 is 0. 1, 1, and then 0. And the multiplication. Zero, one, zero, one. Right, and you can see here that one is a unity. All right, so let's consider um, the sets of all integers of uh, of the type three uh, Z. These are all integers of the type 3k. Okay. Uh, the set of all integers, let's say, let's consider the set 3z, which is of the type 3k, where k is an integer. Okay, so um, you can see here that um, you can check that all axioms are actually met. So uh, this is a ring without unity. Why? Because uh, it doesn't contain uh, one, right? So since one is not three Z, that's a ring without uh, unity. So in fact, generally, in general, for 
um, n, which is a natural number such that n is strictly bigger than 1, uh, nz, which is the set of all integers of the type um, nk, where k is an integer, all multiple of n, is a ring without uh, unity. Here's another example. Um, the set of all uh, polynomials with a, a rational coefficient uh, denoted by denote such a set Q X is a ring when uh, uh, endowed with uh, uh, addition and uh, multiplication of functions. In the usual manner, okay. Um, take here's another example. Consider, for example, z by uh, x, um, which is uh, the set of all polynomials with uh, coefficients in Z5. Uh, this is also a ring. You can check again that all the axioms here will, will hold. And um, so here, the, the, so this is a ring when uh, endowed when endowed with uh, uh, addition and uh, multiplication mod 5 take for instance in this ring take for instance 3 uh, x plus uh, um, 3 added to the polynomial uh, 2x plus uh, um, 1 then that will be 5x plus uh, 4 but 5 is 0 so this is just 4 right if instead we have 2x plus uh, 3, sorry, 3x plus 3 times 2x plus 1, so this will be 6x square, right, plus uh, 3x plus 6x plus 3, but uh, 6 is 1, mod, mod 5, so we get x square plus uh, 3x plus uh, 3 plus 6 is 9 but 9 mod 5 is 4 plus 3 okay all right so this is also another example of of a ring let us uh, take a look at at an example of a non commutative ring let um, m to to z be the set of all uh, two by two matrices with integer entries. Okay, so uh, this is an example. This is this is an example. Okay, for for us here, we endow endowed with. Uh, uh, matrix 
edition and uh, matrix multiplication is uh, an example of uh, a non uh, commutative ring, right? And remember that the commu non commutativity is always coming from the uh, multiplication part. And the way to see it is to take one zero zero one uh, zero time, let's say. 0, 0, 1, no, instead I will use uh, oh, 1, 1, 1, 0, we'll put, put 2 here, sorry, and then we'll put 1 here, okay, so what we get, we get 2, and uh, here we get, we have 2 here, and we have 2, zero and then one right but if you were to take let's say one one zero one time two zero zero one we'll get two again uh one zero and then one right so this clearly shows that uh Two zero zero one time one one zero one is not equal to one one zero one time two zero uh, zero one. Now, uh, this is a non commutative ring with uh, so M two by two Z is a non commutative ring. with uh, uh, a unity and our unity here is our so-called one is just the identity is the identity matrix one one zero zero so there's a, a, a proposition Let A and B be two elements in a ring. Then um, A times zero is uh, zero times A, and that will be zero. Two, A times the additive opposite of B is actually the opposite of AB, and the opposite of A times B is the opposite of AB as well. Three, uh, the opposite of A times the opposite of B is AB. Fourthly, negative one times A is equal to negative A if uh, R is a ring with uh, unity. Now, let us look at the proof of uh, 1. If we take A times our 0, whatever our 0 is, keep in mind again here that this, is not, may, this may not be the usual uh, uh, 0, or this A may not even be a real number, right? We could be dealing with matrices or even things much more foreign to us. So in any case, by definition, Whatever the zero is has to be zero plus zero by its definition. And then by the distributive property, we know that this is a times zero plus uh, a times zero. Now, if we add the opposite to each side, so if you have a zero plus uh, a times zero, this will be a zero plus a zero plus um, the opposite a times zero. But, um, this will give us zero is equal to a times zero, right? So, and which is exactly what um, we needed. 
So, what about two? Um, we know that zero is a time b plus the opposite of b, which by then by distributive property would be a b plus a time the opposite of b, right? So if we add to zero, the opposite of a b will get here uh, a b plus a times the opposite of b plus the opposite of a b. Um, but this will be the opposite of a b and now uh, taking care of this and this putting these two together because they're opposite of each other they'll add up to zero right and um, as a result uh, we get that uh, a times the opposite of b must be the opposite of a b now again so this is a convention from here on uh, given a ring R a zero denotes the uh, additive identity and uh, one, if it exists, stands for the multiplicative identity. Okay, just reminding you again of this fact. Now, so here's some additional definition let r be a ring and suppose that x and y are non additive identities identity in r in other words um, x and y are non-zero such that some either x y is zero or y x is zero then we say that x and y are zero divisor so if we can find two um, non-zero element and somehow the product is zero then we say that uh, the numbers are zero divisor so at first this seems strange but then when you take a careful look it becomes sort of uh, kind of not surprising at all consider for instance uh, in uh, in uh, Z6, let's two and three be element in Z6, right? Let's two and three be element in Z6. Clearly, uh, two and three are non-zero, right? Uh, but since two times three, which is uh, mod six, is zero, uh, it follows that uh, 2 and 3 are 0 divisors in Z6. So let us look at uh, the following um, example. In uh, Z16, um, in the ring, so this is essentially the ring of all Z16X is the ring of all uh, polynomials with uh, 
coefficient in uh, z16 right so take the polynomial 4x plus 4 and then square it if we uh, fold this out we get 16x squared plus 16x plus 16x plus 16 but if we take mod 16 then we get a zero everywhere right so that tells you that and 4x plus 4 is a non-zero polynomial uh, so 4x plus 4 is a zero divisor in the ring z16 uh, x now let's consider uh, the ring of all uh, two by two matrices not necessarily invariable but all square matrices all square matrices of order two then uh, let's take um, the following product a zero plus zero b that will be zero, right? Uh, what if we were to take uh, a zero and zero zero, we're gonna get zero. What if I take uh, a zero zero b, we get. Uh, I'm sorry. So we have a. We have a zero zero so we get zero here and then we get zero here and then next we move to zero 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 b that'll give us again zero what if we take uh, this with that we get again zero right so again so we can see here that a zero 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 and uh, uh, zero zero b zero are zero divisors in uh, the ring m2 by 2r the ring of all square matrices of order of order 2 now <coughs> we will say let's consider um, the equation nine x is equal to three in in the ring r with addition and multiplication the usual addition and the usual multiplication so to solve this equation to solve uh, such an equation you know the trick the trick is to is to seek the inverse of nine right and we know that the inverse of 9 here is denoted 1 over n and then you multiply both left and right by the inverse of 9 and uh, this will uh, give you um, an equation which is equivalent to x is equal to uh, 1 third right so you can solve this equation this equation this equation has a unique solution in in this ring since uh, 9 has a multiplicative inverse now let us consider the same equation but in a different ring consider the equation 9x is equal to uh, Three in uh, in the ring Z mod twelve uh, equipped with uh, addition and multiplication mod modulo twelve to uh, three right then we get that nine times three is twenty seven and then mod twelve is going to be three right and if we were to take x to be also let's say seven then one can check that nine times seven mod twelve is also three and if you were to take x to be eleven you can also check that nine times eleven uh, mod twelve is also three so the same equation nine x is equal to three 
in uh, uh, Z12 endowed with addition modulo 6 and multiplication modulo 6 uh, has uh, for solutions three seven and then eleven okay and uh, so uh, and finding these solutions uh, the the process used to in finding this solution um, is not uh, based on finding on just finding an inverse for uh, for nine. All right, so let's look at the equation 9x is equal to 3 again. And let's take a look at um, a product of 9. So 9 times 1 mod 2 is, of course, going to be 9. 9 times 2 mod 12 is 6. 3, 0, 9. Uh, for 6, we get 6. 3, 0, 9630 right so you can see that it's not possible to find uh, that does not exist we cannot find we cannot find um, B in Z12 such that 9B is 1 Right, so this this shows that this shows that uh, nine has no uh, multiplicative inverse. Right, so this is an example of uh, a ring in which solving a, a simple equation is can be a bit difficult. Let uh, R be a ring with uh, uh, unity. Next, let X and Y be uh, elements of R. If X, Y is y x which is equal to one then uh, y is called the multiplicative inverse of uh, x and we write that y is x inverse. Now, <clears throat> for instance, um, if p is a uh, prime, so we can find uh, integers s and t uh, such that for k in zp sk plus pt is equal to 1 since uh, the greatest common uh, divisor between k and p uh, is 1 so this will show that sk is equal to negative pt plus 1 and as a result um, here I'm assuming that k is non-zero so as a result uh, any non-zero element of uh, 
ZP has a multiplicative inverse. So um, in Z, uh, the only integers uh, with uh, multiplicative uh, inverse are 1 and negative 1. Um, let us consider uh, the uh, the ring of all two by two matrices with rational en entries. So this would be the set of all matrices of the type A, B, C, D, such that A, B, C, and D are rational numbers. Consider, for instance, the element one zero one zero. Uh, so if you compute the determinant of this element, we get zero, right? So this element has no in multiplicative inverse. Multiplicative uh, inverse. Now, <coughs> So, and this is sort of the case, so uh, in uh, uh, most rings, some elements have a multiplicative inverse. Uh, and others don't. So, moreover, when uh, A in a ring R has an inverse, then uh, um, the equation in this case the equation ax is equal to b has a unique solution of the form x is a inverse of b moving forward um, We'll say that an element lil x in a ring R with unity uh, is called a unit if it has a multiplicative. inverse so for instance in Z uh, 1 and negative 1 are the only unit and one should not confuse uh, unit C, uh, unity with a unit so for instance 1 is a unity while uh, negative one is not a unity. Okay. Now let's consider, for instance, Z6. Um, so in Z6, you see that uh, one and five are units. On the other hand, uh, 
0, 2, 3, and 4 are not. So uh, generally, um, given an element little x, uh, little a in uh, Zn, we'll say that a is a unit if there exists an element x in Zn such that uh, a time x uh, modulo n is equal to 1. In other words, we can write ax as equal to qn plus 1 for some uh, integer So let's consider, for example, uh, the set of all rational numbers, the ring of all rational numbers, the ring Q together with addition and multiplication. Um, in this ring, uh, every non-zero uh, rational number is uh, a unit. So notice that an element in a ring can be neither a unit nor a zero divisor. Take for example, uh, in uh, in Z, uh, four is a uh, uh, is neither a unit because it has no inverse, right? No, is it a zero divisor? Now, moving forward, um, we will co introduce the concept of uh, an integral domain. An integral domain, an integral domain, an integral domain is a commutative ring. with unity that has uh, no zero divisor. So, so for example, Uh, let P be a prime number and let X, Y be two elements in ZP. Um, see that X, Y is going to be equal to zero uh, if and only if X, Y uh, is uh, a multiple of uh, p, right? Now, uh, since p is prime, uh, 
uh, it must be the case that uh, either x or y uh, is divisible is divisible uh, by p. Uh, suppose otherwise. Then we should be able to write x as, uh, let's say, q1 p plus r1. Um, let me use here, yeah, q1 and r1 and y as being equal to q2 p plus r2, where uh, q1 q2 r1 r2 are integers and um, r1 actually is uh, strictly in between 0 and p and also um, so without loss of generality let, let us just assume that uh, r1 is in strictly in between 0 and p and um, that uh, r2 is uh, possibly between uh, 0 including 0 and p if one were to take the product xy then we will get q1p plus r1 plus q2p plus r2 expanding this will be q1 q2 p square plus uh, q1 p r2 plus uh, r1 q2 p plus r1 and then r2 and this here is a multiple of p and the fact that this is not um is the is, is the product of the remainder will force this not to be a multiple of n this cannot be a multiple of p okay so this is why if we assume that p is a prime and x y is a multiple of p then either x or y has to be a multiple of p now um <clears throat> so this this then uh tells us that either this tells us that either x must be equal to zero or y must be equal to zero in the ring zp So this shows that this uh, ZP uh, is uh, an integral domain is an integral domain when uh, P is prime. Uh, note also that um, Zn uh, is not an integral domain, an integral domain uh, when uh, n is not prime. So uh, indeed, assuming that n is uh, not prime, we can factor n as a times b, where uh, a and b are integers, and additionally, a and B are sitting in between 0 and N. Okay. But uh, neither A nor B can be congruent. Can be congruent to uh, 0 modulo N. 
So that means that um, this A and B are both uh, zero divisors. Uh, definition will say that a field uh, is uh, a commutative ring with um, unity such that every non-zero element has an inverse. So from our definition, Note that from our definition, uh, if we let F be a field, then uh, uh, the multiplicative group of unit, and what is this? This is often denoted F star and this will be f take away zero um, uh, is a group is essentially is a maximal is a maximal group uh, containing the unity In fact, it's simply a maximal group uh, with respect to the multiplication, with uh, respect to the multiplication operation. Multiplication operation. All right, so. As a consequence of these uh, observations, uh, we can we can uh, derive the following uh, propositions. Proposition. The first is that, uh, by definition, any field is uh, an integral domain and the second is that any finite inter integral domain uh, is a field. So for the first part, note that uh, if we assume that A and B are element of F, where F is a field, uh, such that A B is zero and A is non zero, then uh, B will be equal to, of course, A inverse A uh, B, right? Which is going to be um, equal to 
to zero. Uh, so F has no zero divisor. So this establishes one. Now for the proof of two, um, for this one here, it suffices. So if we let D be a finite integral domain uh, to show this result, it suffices to uh, show that this set which is obtained by taking zero from D is a group. With respect, with respect to the multiplication operation. Okay. So um, here are some examples: uh, the set of all rationals, the set of all reals, the set of all complex are all uh, fields. There is another example. Um, if we take um, Zn, then Zn is a field if and uh, only if Uh, N is prime. Here is another example. Let's consider uh, we define this as Q excuse me, square root of 2 as the set of all uh, numbers of the type X plus Y times square root of 2 where X and Y are rational numbers. Uh, in fact, uh, so this is also a field. And we can regard this, in fact, as a subfield of the uh, of the reals. Of R endowed with addition with uh, multiplication, and perhaps uh, what is maybe a little. Um, harder to believe is that every non-zero element has an inverse. And to show you this, let's consider 1 over x plus y uh, square root of 2. And we'll assume here that um, if we take x squared plus y squared, this will always be a non-zero uh, element. And, and the way to proceed here uh, is the usual thing. We will uh, multiply and divide uh, by the conjugate, so multiply by x minus y square root of 2, and then here you have x minus y square root of 2. And the fact that on the denominator we have a difference of, uh, uh, the, so this will be a difference of two perfect squares, so it will be x square minus y square root of 2 square over x minus y square root of 2. And this is x minus y square root of 2 over x squared minus 2y uh, squared. 
and so this will give us x over x squared minus 2y squared uh, plus negative y over x squared plus 2y squared times square root of 2 and since um, x over x squared minus 2y squared and negative y over x squared plus 2y squared are both uh, rationals then it follows that 1 over x plus y square root of 2 is also in in this uh, set so this set is closed under taking inverses right and then you can check also that all of the axioms require to be uh, a field uh, are met so there are all kind of interesting uh, fields out there but the most uh, uh, common fields are the rationals, the reals, and the set of all complex numbers. Definition. The characteristic, the characteristic, characteristic of uh, a ring R is uh, the smallest um non negative integer n such that if we consider nx which is x plus x n many times we get zero for any x in the ring. And if uh, no such n exists, we say that R has a characteristic zero. So uh, some facts here are the following. If the additive order of one is uh, not finite, then, um, then the characteristic of a ring R uh, is uh, zero. Now on the other hand, if um, the additive order of uh, one is n, then uh, the characteristic of R is uh, N. Okay, so as an illustration, the integers, the rational, the real, the complex, all have characteristic zero. However, if you take a ring like ZP, it has characteristic P. All right, so in summary, in this uh, lesson, we have discussed a new algebraic structure called uh, a ring. And um, uh, our prototype for a ring is the set of all integers endowed with uh, the usual addition and usual multiplication. 
However, in uh, many of the examples that we have discussed, there are some uh, fairly important nuances that we need to uh, keep in mind. So for instance, commutativity is not always guaranteed. There are rings which are not commutative, and that's important to remember. And uh, we also discussed the concept of a unity, and then we saw that uh, many rings don't necessarily have a unity element as well. All right. So again, that's also an important concept uh, to, to, to keep in mind. Now, uh, we discussed the concept of units and um, in a ring with unity, the elements which have multiplicative inverse are called the unit. And the other elements are called zero divisors. Now, for given a commutative um, ring with no zero divisor, such a structure kind of reminds us of the ring of uh, integers with additional multiplication. And this generalization of such rings, of such rings uh, will be called integral domain. And, uh, and an integral domain in which all non-zero elements uh, units will be called, we call it a field. And the, the arithmetic of field is, uh, bears a striking resemblance with the arithmetic of the rationals. Uh, <coughs> and the reals and the complex, but however, unlike those fields, there exist fields of characteristic, uh, of finite characteristic like uh, Z5, Z3, Z11, Z13, generally Zp when P is prime. Perhaps you'll find the following diagram uh, useful. So if this represents uh, the collection of all rings, then uh, inside this uh, collection, we'll have uh, the commutative rings. This is commutative. Um, and then we also have here rings with unity. And um, <clears throat> inside this ring, we can have uh, integral domains. And inside this, we'll have uh, fields. 